My name is Nora Silver. I'm the founder and faculty director of the Center for Social Sector Leadership at Haas. Um, and it is this center that sponsors Berkeley Board Fellows. I want to thank you all for being here. I'll try to run you through what the program is about, leave time for questions, and discuss something about the program with you. Let me start with some introductions. Go ahead to the second slide. So we have with us two people who are former Berkeley Board Fellows, Kyle Ames from Lifelong Medical Center. Kyle, thanks for being here. Adolfo Quesada from Berkeley um, Health Institute. And I'm gonna invite both of you to jump in as I go through and we'll also, I'm gonna pause in the middle for a little kind of mini panel asking you questions about what worked well for you as a board fellow, what were the challenges and any advice you'd give to others but feel free to jump in at any time, okay? Right? I also want to introduce two people from the center, Mark Westover, and they are saying social impact is Stephanie Van Nassau. These are people who help us run the Berkeley Board Fellows Program, and you'll be hearing from them, if not seeing them directly in communications. So with that, let me go ahead and jump in and talk a little bit about Board Fellows and why we have it. So why should you become a Berkeley Board Fellow? Let me just do it. So it's recommended that you start with governance early. Governance is a kind of leadership. And a few years ago, Paul Jansen, who teaches the spring nonprofit boards course, and I did a study of 2,000 leaders in the U.S., 1,500 corporate, 300 public sector, and 200 nonprofit sector. And we wanted to know the degree to which they worked in sectors other than their own, volunteering, sitting on a board, Presidential Transition Committee, all of these things. And what we found was that fully half of current top leaders in the U.S. did this kind of cross work, and many of them started with governance serving on boards. And their advice to current MBAs was start early. Okay? So it is a leadership opportunity. It's an unusual leadership opportunity to serve on a board. It's also an opportunity to leverage your social impact. So you can do direct service, which is wonderful. You can also serve on a board that helps give direction to an organization that in, that in turn serves clients. So you get a leverage effect of what you're doing. This year, we're going to be doing a little, a few things differently in board fellows. So one of them is that we're only going to be working with nonprofit boards helping children and youth year during COVID-19 because it's so disproportionately has affected young children and, and kids in school that we thought here's a way we can really contribute in particular this year. It also gives you an opportunity to work in a local community during this, which is for many of you your first year here in Berkeley or at Haas, it gives you a chance to really kind of dig in, learn more and directly contribute to what's going on locally. So, those are the reasons we think it's important for you, you to consider being a board fellow. We want to for you to turn it. Okay, so we have somebody here. All right. Next slide, if you would please. Mark. Thank you. So, what do fellows do? Basically, you're doing three things. You're engaging in board service. You participate in all board meetings as a non-voting member. That protects you legally, that protects the board legally. We want you to participate, we want you to know what it's like to serve on a board. And this year, of course, it will be probably for the full year, all virtual. So it will be easier for you to attend board meetings. We also want you to serve on a board committee because the way boards do their work is often they have board meetings with full board members and participation. <laughs> breakout in committees like a program committee or a personnel committee. And we want you to have that experience as well. So you'll serve on a committee and you'll also do a project, something significant that the organization needs right now. And in a few minutes, I'll tell you what some of those projects are. We also ask you to participate with us in the program. So there's a formal kickoff. There's a scoping of a project that you communicate to us. We have check-ins with you to make sure things are going well. We have coaches for you this year. And then we ask you to report back to us what the final project was and how it went. And I'll discuss more of those in a little while along with a calendar. 
So if we could go to the next slide. All right, so how do you work? There are a couple slides on this. One is we place you in pairs. So you're going with another MBA to participate in board meetings, to serve on the committee, and also to do the project. It makes it more fun. It makes us able to offer a more robust project to the organizations, because the organizations participate in this for a couple of reasons. One is they're trying to help us create the next generation of board leaders, and they've agreed to help train you to do that. They also want a project, um, because that's something that directly they will benefit from now. And they want your ideas. They want the creativity and the fresh thinking of new generation board leaders and your ideas. Okay, so you work in pairs for all of those aspects. You're also going to meet with your coach at least three times during the year because the, the board fellows goes from October to May. So you'll meet with your coach. And for the first time this year, we are requiring you to take a nonprofit boards class. Some of you may be taking it for the fall, that's great. Some of you, um, the others will take it in the spring. It'll be offered early spring, like February, two Sundays. And I'll talk more about both the coaching and the class, and the class in just a minute, okay? So to give you a sense of the coaches, Mark, could you go to the next slide, please? We have five coaches this year. All are experienced board members. Um, more than half are MBAs, so they sat in your seat at some point. Um, a couple of them have been board chairs, and each of these coaches has agreed to work with two pairs of fellows, so they'll be following you closely. Now, understand this is, they're, they're contributing their time, they're doing this pro bono, in you know, you are, so please prepare your questions well, and use them well, come with key questions, any background they need, but these will be the people who are assigned to you, probably on the basis of where our past experience best matches the organizations you'll be working with. Okay, so these are the fellow, the, the coaches, you'll have one of them assigned to you. Next slide. So the class, the nonprofit boards class, two Sundays in the spring. These are the topics that you'll cover. You know, why boards exist, what do they actually do, what's the difference between a nonprofit and a for-profit board. If you look, by the way, particularly for women, if you look at the resumes of people who serve on corporate boards, they have a deep past in having first served on nonprofit boards. So this is kind of a career ladder in terms of government. It also could be a career, a career ladder in terms of working in nonprofits or working on larger boards throughout your career. So we need to know what are the responsibilities, practical issues come up, what makes board performance strong, both as a full board or as an individual. Because one of the things that's different here in governance is leadership in governance is you acting as a member of the board. So it's less individual and more the board as a whole. How does a board interact with the executives and senior staff and with the community? How do you know if you're doing well and what should you think about if you're thinking about joining a board? You know, a couple of things that will happen this year. One is there will be a couple of panels where you'll get to hear from experienced board members and CEOs and fundraisers of boards. You'll get to hear both perspectives and you're also gonna work on some live cases. So I just got earlier today live case from the spring class um, that's a case about CARE, the anti-poverty organization, and how it responded to COVID. Okay, so, so very kind of contemporary cases. Okay, let me pause there. Any questions that people would pose at this point, you can type them in and I'm happy to answer them. Let's go back to the former slide if we could. Yeah. Not at this point. Okay. Let me go ahead then to the organizations we'll be serving this year. So I want to preface this by saying these are some hardy organizations. Put yourself in the position of being in an organization that serves children and youth. COVID hits. 
racist is raised as a huge issue. Right now we have fires. Kids generally can't return to school. Child care centers, you know, across the country are being just forced out of business. And you're there trying to serve kids. We talked to a number of organizations that just felt that they, they were just drowning and they couldn't participate in board fellows this year. But these are the ones who stepped forward and said, actually, with the increased demands on us and with our having to be more strategic and thoughtful and responsive, we could really use the board fellows this year. So we made the decision to focus on children and youth for the reasons of what's going on in the world, these are the organizations that stepped forward. Some of them are new to us, some of them are ongoing. So if we go to the next page, I wanna highlight for you some of the projects. When you apply, you can also rank your preferences in which organizations you would like to join. I wanna caution you in, in this way. The most important part of this experience is learning to how, to how to be a good board member and what governance is. So the number thing here is that, you, that we've vetted these organizations that have strong boards and are really ready to bring you on. You will have a particular mentor from the board. So focus on the governance. You'll also do a project. So look at these and see which projects particularly interest you. You'll see a number of them. Um, are dealing with some sort of fund development, right? Revenue is a real issue this year for these organizations. You'll see Destiny Arts earned income as a revenue stream. That's also true for another, let's see, um, safe passages, fee-for-service options. And others are looking at more ongoing kinds of issues that are, that are regular in boards, like creating a nonprofit dashboard or looking at a committee structure. Others are more responsive to right now the time. So Alameda Point Collaborative serves homeless families and children, and they want somebody to help think through how you can create more online engagement with the kids that are living. This is a, this is a, a live workplace at Alameda Point Collaborative. Um, the Y of Silicon Valley has a new commitment to equity committee and one the board fellows to work with them to make sure they're, they can, they're doing the most they can to become a more equitable and inclusive organization. Um, Richmond Promise, which provides scholarships to kids coming out of high school, is looking for new opportunities for scholarship sponsorship from small businesses in Richmond. So you can see it's a mix and match of different kinds of issues together. These are the kinds of issues that boards often handle. So you're going to get a good experience or exposure to what the um, what nonprofit board service looks like. Next slide, Mark. We'll do two more slides, and then we're going to open it up and hear from both um, both the former board fellows and your questions. So this is what the year looks like. We'll have a formal kickoff off on October sixth which would be the first time that you will meet your board mentor. I'll talk about matching and how that happens before then in just a minute, okay? You'll have a few weeks to develop your scope for your project, which you'll send then to the center and to your coach, and you'll meet with your coach after your first board meeting, because then you'll know more the questions you have. And often the questions in the past have been, you know, how do I interact? How do I get my voice heard? When do I speak up? When do I not? So we'll, we'll answer those. And then in the spring semester, early on, you'll take the nonprofit boards course. Um, before then, just a heads up, on our website, there are lots of nonprofit board resources. If you look in Berkeley Board Fellows, there's a whole page of resources. So we help you know what you're doing before you start and in the kickoff and then again in the boards course. We'll do check-ins with you in January. You'll check in with your coach in February. There'll be a program finale later in April, and then your final project will be delivered to us. So that's how it goes. I wanna emphasize this is the first year that we'll be giving credit, academic credit, one unit to board fellows. And that's really um, in addition to your one unit for the course. Okay, so you'll be getting two units of credit 
which board fellows in the past have not gotten. Okay, next slide. So how do we take it from here? There's an application line. Here's what we're looking for. We're looking for a commitment to do this program. What we want is to make sure you show up to the board meetings, you participate, you're active in creating a project. These boards are investing in you and we ask you to invest in them. We wanna know your preferences, but we wanna know first and foremost that you really are able and willing to commit to this, including taking a class in the spring. And in that spring class, I should have mentioned this, you don't know about points yet, but in the spring, you'll get a thousand points to bid on electives. If you're a board fellow, because you're required to take one class, you will get 80 fewer points than that thousand, because that will be applied to taking the nonprofit boards class. We'll automatically enroll you at the least number of points you can, which is 80 points. Okay, we'll have a matching committee that looks through the applications and hopes to make the best match between your interests first and what the skills needed for the project that the organization's asking for second. And if you'd like to join us, we're looking for a couple of rep your cohort to help us. So let us know that in your application. It asks you for that. We'll announce the matches. We'll get those out to you on September 22nd. If for whatever reason you wanna change your match, you can try to change with somebody else. You'll have all the emails and who's assigned to what and let us know final, final posting will be by September 25th. Okay, so that's the overview. Let's go back then to hear from Adolfo and Kyle about what your experiences were like and to have any questions that any, then any of the rest of you have. How many people will actually be accepted? Okay. We're gonna have 10 organizations, a pair of fellows with each. So it's gonna be 20 fellows. This is smaller than in the past. Um, we believed that mo many organizations just couldn't make good use of a fellow this year. And so we wanted to skinny it down. This is a pilot in that we're requiring coaching, we're requiring you to take a nonprofit class, and we're trying to make a real impact on these organizations serving kids in the Bay Area this year. Other questions? There's no difference whether you take the course in the fall or the spring. However, I think has, has ad drop ended for the fall semester yet? Does anybody know? Yes, yeah, it ended at least for second years, but I think in general. Okay, so the question is thanks. Yes, dropout has closed. Okay, so you can't take it for the fall. You have to take it. Um, I don't know if you tried to petition if they would allow it, but it, you know, dropout has closed formally. Any other quick questions? Okay, Adolfo, you're up here. Kyle, join us. So I guess my questions are really, to begin with, are really pretty straightforward. You know, why did you do board fellows? Did you get out of it what you wanted and what did you get out of it? And what were the challenges and any advice you would give? So Adolfo, you wanna start us out with the first question, then Kyle, you come in as well. Okay, so the first question, if I understood you correctly, is why we did it, the, why I yeah. did the, the, the program. So yeah. it was, it's a clear answer because um, has, has some specific kind of um, highlighted programs that many people uh, apply to. One is like Berkeley Level Fellows, the other is Social Sector Solutions and then IBD. They are like the three of them, they are very consulting style. Uh, so maybe you don't need to take the, the three of them, but it's a, it was a clear reason for me for joining HAS in the sense that I wanted to participate in a direct way in how decisions are made and how is the internal organization and structure of a nonprofit, especially the 
uh, the bigger the nonprofit for me was like a more appealing as it was my case because I wanted to see how are the dynamics, the politics inside, how they take decisions when they have a very limited budget. So um, giving me the, this choice of joining the um, Public Health Institute, which is a very well recognized and very important institutions for public health in the Bay Area and California, I, I was like very, very happy to, to assist them. So that was the reason, basically known from, a, I'm an international, so I have a in, in, I come from Spain and many times there is not that much a uh, trend of, of how boards uh, work there and it's something very not transparent in the sense that because people not uh, they don't usually join uh, frequently the the board the board's meeting or the, basically the participate in a board so I, it was something that I wanted to learn about because I want to transfer to transition from strategy consulting to uh, social impact or to sustainability and I think uh, I thought that was a, a clear choice at the, even like at the beginning of the of the MBA from the very very early start as you mentioned. Okay, right. thanks, Adolfo. Kyle, how about you? Why did you decide to do board fellows? Yeah, just like Adolfo mentioned, I came to Berkeley to get involved in community and get involved in social impact. Uh, I have a background. I'm a veteran um, and worked for some nonprofits in the past um, for housing organizations similar to what APC is. And so this provided an opportunity to get involved in leadership at the nonprofit level um, and several organizations that I've worked for in the past. Um, and I, I worked for Lifelong Medical, which is one of the larger federally qualified health centers in the community. Um, great, great organization. Um, previous to coming to Haas, I worked in health policy, particularly in Medicaid at the state level. And so um, FQHCs or community clinics, they're colloquially known as, um, kind of work in that space and provide services to low income and the poor populations. Um, they, they focus on the elderly population, but they do provide services for the homeless downtown Oakland. And so it was really cool to be able to not only uh, be involved in decision, not be involved in decision making, but essentially being involved in decision making at that level, um, but also work on a project that directly impacted um, kind of disadvantaged populations. Okay, so why don't you continue, Kyle? So what were the highlights for you? What, was, what, what did you take away? What were the best experiences for you from being there? Yeah, and I'll preface this with, I think I had a non-standard experience and I'm, I'll, I'm bringing that up because I think I did what, um, what you will be told next year what not to do. Um, and I, I guess I'll explain that. So um, I think one of the main things that we were instructed to to focus on early on was making sure the project was in scope and making sure that we weren't doing more than, than like what was, you know, then like what kind of the examples that you provided. Um, and so early on we were given our project, which was a consulting project. And we, we essentially did a market landscape, landscape analysis for um, school nursing facility uh, market and then provided a analysis financially and operational analysis of their internal organization. <laughs> and so it ended up being a, a pretty big project. Um, unfortunately, at the time, we weren't getting credit for our work. But it was great in that I was coming from the social sector and, and kind of the military side of things. And so it was cool to kind of get my feet wet in a consulting type project. Um, and I worked with, what was really cool for me with the program, I worked with a, so I'm a Dewey, I'm an MPH MBA student. And I worked with an MPP MPH student and so we definitely provided different perspectives on the project. And I thought that was really cool. That was really valuable for me to kind of work collaboratively with a different student outside of Haas. And, and you know, it was a bear of a project. I think we, we, we actually gave our last, last presentation July 27th. So oh my. A, little, a little outside of the, the time frame, I think traditionally allotted for the, the program. But it was really cool. You know, we really felt welcomed within the organization. Um, our project actually led to decisions being made um, at the strategic level. So it was really cool to actually provide valuable impact to the organization. And as far as what I get out of it, you know, I didn't go into the, the program thinking I was going to come out with like consulting type experience. Um, it was really geared towards just understanding how boards work, how decisions are made, and what are all the factors that go into decisions and what are the different stakeholders involved, particularly when they're talking with a community clinic and like when you're working among policy, you're working with different stakeholders, other 
um, you know, homeless shelters in this case or other healthcare providers, you know, just kind of understand that ecosystem was really interesting to me and I was really excited about it. But then kind of like the, the, like the bear of a project was kind of like a bonus, if you will. I don't know if you can call it a bonus, but it was a bonus. And um, I, it was a really awesome experience for me. Okay, thanks, Kyle. Adolfo, how about you? So my highlight is very related to COVID, which is not a surprise and is in a sense a bit different than Cal, because we from the very beginning, we focus a lot on the scope. And what happens was that uh, we defined a clear scope that was like shattered in the middle of the COVID crisis, because I think it's important that we have to understand that this organization, they have a lot of effort, they have a lot of initiatives, but they work in a slightly different way than other organizations. They basically are kind of like a central support to very, uh, very varied uh, streams and research and projects. So they don't have sometimes the direct influence in all these researchers or doctors or other people that they are working in dry, for drugs research, for community inclusion for um, work, uh, workforce development for many different topics related to health or to like public health but they don't have the final word so the politics are very specifically um, they basically they they were thinking about a scope that it was not like fully possible to to develop later so my highlight for this uh, project that i had is uh, don't worry don't freak out when things are totally changed from the original idea because uh, I was working with Nicole. Nicole is also a friend of Kyle. She's an amazing person. It was my, my pair in the in the project. And sometimes we were a bit kind of nervous. It's like, are we are we actually doing what we are supposed to do in the sense like between we, because at the end you are between has and the organization so you also have to properly represent has um the my answer will be don't worry just put the passion put the commitment on and try to be there for them because uh, for this organization what happened is with the COVID, all the budget for many of their different initiatives it was at risk so they have a similar to what can happen in a university suddenly you have the budget cut and projects that had been in research for years they are at risk of basically stopping and being cancelled and just yes, all that work loss so they were very nervous inside the organization at some points uh, they didn't just want two consultants with a formal project they just wanted two people that were able to help them and to assist them in the way that we could so uh, we deliver a big part of what it was initially um, initially stated but in a different way instead of more formal consulting project it was more okay uh, like her name was Melange and we had the luxury to work with an amazing uh, person within the organization she, she's the COO directly and then with the board president as well and they were kind of like giving us a specific assignments related to the original scope but not in a as I mentioned in a formal way so my highlight is be super flexible this uh, organization and these people inside this organization they are going to be very welcome and very um, very happy that we can assist them especially with this difficult time so don't try to be like super fixed if the if the plan is not uh, originally working because they are going to even tell you it's like we have to deviate from this plan um, we really appreciate that you are here so if you can also like be a bit uh, flexible and have the just be be there for them like sometimes we think that we need to deliver the super big uh, deliverable that is like perfect like kind of McKinsey style and just with a few initiatives that they like that you put time on that and you are uh, passionate about that and that you ch cross check very often with them that uh, in this case it was enough and I think in many cases it's going to be enough so just uh, as a conclusion we help them to reassess the strategic plan especially um, the communication internal and external of the com of, the, of their strategic plan because they are big, big organization with very different uh, work stream or different initiatives and they were not happy how they communicate that they were not happy how people understand what they do they don't even sometimes do it like internally so less even less like people from outside especially investors and donors which is sometimes the, the end goal of attracting more capital so we put more order on that with this research with it benchmarking of how other organizations do it even in the bay area they are very big foundations that they have much uh, concise and much more clear communication strategy um, so the result has been like very good we are still in contact with them and we are invited in a kind of like as Kai was mentioning like off 
off track. We are inviting in a, in a board meeting at the end of September. So that's, that's kind of, and it was because at some points it was very difficult to, to meet with all the people during the COVID crisis. So yeah, we have a very good uh, connection with them. And, and especially Nicole that she's working in the healthcare sector, she can leverage on that. So you never know. So. Okay. Okay. It seems almost foolish to ask, all right, what were the greatest challenges? Because you, you know, during COVID they were, but I'll open it up. Either of you want to address anything else about challenges or difficulties? Yeah. So I think what I'll mention is, so I mentioned earlier that our project was probably larger than like what a typical project is for board fellows. And we were open about that for right off the bat. So um, I think during the kickoff, when we discussed our scope with our project mentor, um, we're, we're like, this is too big of a project. Um, we need to limit the scope. And that was something that you guys instructed us to do right off the bat. So I think being transparent is important and having that open communication. We had a really good relationship with our mentor and that we met weekly um, in person before COVID. And I mean, we were constantly emailing back and forth and we just, we were very transparent with like what our expectations are. And, and she was also transparent with what our expectations were. Um, kind of after a couple of weeks, we decided that we liked the project and we decided to go with the original scope. So, but we, we communicated that with her. So I think the, the key point of this is um, have that open communication. I think a lot of times you can fall into the trap of like, you don't want to say no, or you're, cause you're working for nonprofits. So you're, you're in social impact and like, you want to do as much as you can for the organization. And, but like, they, they know that you're, a, you're, you're a student and you have limited bandwidth. So I would just say right off the bat, establish communication, be transparent. Um, I'll let them know what your expectations are for the project. And in our case, we it changed um, from kind of wanting to limit the scope to kind of embracing the challenge. Yeah, yeah, there have been a couple, I wanna just jump in here because there have been a couple of questions about can people do Berkeley Board Fellows and social sector solutions. And yes, I co-teach social sector solutions and have many of the board fellows in class in, in social sector solutions. The difference is this, you have a project as part of your Berkeley Board Fellows. We ask you to work like eight to 10 hours a month on Board Fellows, right? And this year you'll get, you'll get the, the units. Um, in Social Sector Solutions, which is a spring offering, it's a three unit course, it's eight to 12 hours a week. And rather than being in pairs, you're in a team of five you are working directly with the McKinsey consultant who is coaching you weekly, right? So it's a heavier lifting. It's a much bigger scope. Um, I'll give you an example. I'm talking with potential SQ clients right now. Um, so one of them is an organization that builds structures for people coming out of prison that are healing spaces. Picture like, you know, an, a, a small tiny house that's built to be, to be healing. And because, the, because of COVID, prisoners are being released and the demand on this organization to build many of these structures is very, very high. I should mention they build them also with the input and the labor in part with people who've come out of prison and also with mostly women coming out of domestic violence situations, right? So it's a big strategy project. How do they get this done, right? It's, it's from building to marketing to distribution, all of that. So the SQ projects are, are much bigger. The board um, fellows projects also have a difference in that generally you're reporting up to the board, whereas with S cubed, you're reporting to the, the executive staff. So those are some of the differences and happy to answer more. Um, Kyle, Adolfo, any other wisdom you would share or advice for these folks thinking about doing that this year? Thinking about doing board fellows. Yeah, I mean, I will encourage to do that even in the during this time because um, and now that we are seeing, I think Kyle and I we agree that it's very good to see that we have a new course involved in the in this program. We have more materials and more resources, so that's going to be something that you will really appreciate, independently of you do more consulting style courses or not. And I will encourage you to do that. There are many organizations that they are just so eager to have some help and sometimes just be aware that helping 
it means something different from you than from the organization, but uh, because probably you want to get like so much involvement, but they actually have their own agenda and they are super busy. They are like, as I mentioned, like freaking out with this, with this crisis. So uh, just be there, just be available and just have an, an, a naive passion and a naive uh, willingness, to, willingness to help and to represent us in the way, like in the best way you can. I think that that is like way more than enough and you will have a great experience. You will have uh, an expanded network in a specific sector or type of institutions that is going to be very, valu very valuable independently or not you want to go to the social sector. But if you want to go, that's even more important. So. Just um, just join the program in that sense. Um, don't yeah, like as I can mention, try to scope things very uh, very well from the beginning. But also so try to be aware that this situation is very different from other years, and that uh, like organizations they will be also like more open and more flexible to work with you to have something something working. Yeah. Yeah, just to jump in, you know, don't let my project um, discourage you. I know I've been talking about a number of first years and bandwidth mm -hmm. is pretty tight right now with the start of the semester. So um, yeah. And so I would, I wouldn't, I know you guys are out of Haas, so I'm sure like a lot of you probably put something like, I want to get involved in, in my community on my resume and or during your essays. And like, this is a great opportunity to do that. And no better time than now as our community needs leaders now more than ever. Um, it was a great opportunity in my case. Um, working with my organization kind of allowed me to work with other organizations that were kind of tangentially related and, and I kind of though I'm still working with lifelong it was also kind of an inflection point to work work with additional organizations so you'll never know where it leads you and if you're if you're here for the right reason and you really want to get involved in the community there's no better program at Haas than, than, than the board fellows. If I can add something very quickly about that I remember in late spring that we tried to set up an initiative for uh, helping some organizations, they actually nonprofit or public school, district school, that they were basically having huge problems with the remote uh, remote adaptation and how to pro still provide a value and high quality education to many many any children that they were not even having like the tech or the like the parents they were at home at like situation was very complicated so just i would say leverage this uh, unique opportunity that you have here three people from us and then like the five coaches that they are uh, doing something that i will have uh, i would like to have uh, before this summer when i try to do this initiative and is they have already uh, kind of curated and selected organizations that are going to be willing to have a, a tangible project and a relevant project for you so that's something very very useful like sometimes we try as kai was mentioned we try to get involved in the community but the community is not even ready to have our involvement especially right now during the COVID, because they have their own problems so that's this opportunity Opportunity is unique in the sense that you're going to have a, a real project. Uh, you have a, a organization that has committed to provide you value as long as you also uh, uh, do your part. So that's a that's a real benefit. Thank you. Thanks so much, Kyle and Adolfo. I mean, you've really brought the program to life. Um, just a couple of things I want to kind of piggyback on. You know, the downside is that we won't have interdisciplinary pairs this year, so we won't have a business and a policy student. Um, and we made that decision because it is a Haas, it's a Haas program. And with a limited number of people, we just decided to make it all MBAs. So there is a loss in there. Um, there's also a gain that's, that may not be apparent. Um, when I talked about the coaches, I talked about that they are experienced board members. What I didn't mention is that they're all also experienced consultants. So Paul Jansen and I co-teach solutions. Colin Boyle was a managing director at BCG. Um, Lynn Lamarca Heinrich is a partner at Martin Lundy, and Irvinia Waters runs her own consulting firm. And why that's important is because these are people who can help you scope the project. And scope in any project is kind of the art and science of it. Yes, it will change. And you know, who knows what this universe is gonna look like over the next year. But, but these people will be there to help you continue to scope um, as it goes along. And then the one thing I, I meant to say when I kicked this off and forgot, so I'm just going to put it in here, is um, the first time I met with our new dean, Anne Harrison, one of the first things she said to me was, you know, everywhere I go, I, you know, I know about social impacts, 
and that, that's what I was there to talk to her about, social impact at OSC, and how important it was and that students are really interested in it. The first words out of her mouth were, everywhere I go, the one thing I hear about out there is about Berkeley Board Fellows. So that's what sticks from Haas. And as, as Adolfo or Cossett, you are representing Haas. And you're representing them in a really important way. We are a public university. You know, anybody who goes here as a student or as a faculty member or as a staff, we're privileged to work at Berkeley. And this is a way that we give back that, that matters and is important in the world. So just wanted to say that and is recognized externally and by our dean. Any other questions, comments? Okay, let me ask, yeah, here we go. You know, thank, good question, Joe, thank you. I need to double check that. I know that's what I said. And as I was saying it, I absolutely need to double check it. It may just be one credit. We've gone back and forth. Sorry, with the MBA office, we've gone back and forth and back and forth. I know you get one credit. I am not sure about two. So I will get that out to you. My apologies. It's this has been a um, you know building the ship sailing experience. Thank you, Joe. Joe, did you want to say anything, Joe? You. Um, Joe was in social sector solutions last year and is thinking about applying to board fellows. So what's the difference? The pro, yes, let me call on Joe and the projects, by the way, are on the website. So if you look at under Berkeley board fellow projects listed and this deck will be on our website as well. Immediate next steps. All right. Immediate next steps are apply. The application is live online at Berkeley board fellows. Okay, and the applications are due in the next few days. When are the applications due, Stephanie? They are due on the 14th. Thank you. Okay, yes. Okay, evening weekend students. Beth's time is probably second year. It would be my guess. Third year is fine, but second year is probably best. And Joe, I invited you up. Anything you want to add about social sector solutions versus Berkeley Board Fellows? Why you've done one and now are trying, and now we're interested in the other? Sure. Yeah, I will say that um, I loved social sector solutions. It was a fantastic opportunity to work on an inter interdisciplinary team and on a project that was really meaningful to a nonprofit. Um, I got to work on a nonprofit that was doing gun violence prevention work, and the work was just so incredibly meaningful. So first, a pitch for that. Uh, highly recommend. Really amazing experience. Uh, second, I'm doing Berkeley Board Fellows because as much as uh, social sector solutions was an awesome opportunity, we didn't get as much chance to work with sort of the strategic drivers of the company and the big, you know, big leaders of the company. We were primarily working with the VPs. So for me, this is an opportunity to have more of that, that higher level strategic driving role um, that I'm looking for. So thanks Great. for the opportunity to speak up. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Any final questions, comments? All right, I'll stay on here for the next few minutes. Adolfo and Kyle, if you can stay on, that would be great. And if anybody has individual questions they'd rather ask us in a smaller group, we'll stay on and be happy to answer them. Really hope you'll consider this seriously. Um, consider whether you can make the commitment, and if so, Please apply. We'll look very forward to seeing your applications. Thanks for being here. Anybody wants to talk to us, please come in. Oh, hi, Maddie. Thanks. Hi, thank you. I'm going to hop off. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, I did have one quick question for you. Okay. Um, so I am signed up to take uh, the nonprofit boards class this fall. So I just wanted to see if, if there's any concern at all about taking it prior to the spring. It's great. It's okay. great. We will get we will get you the unit of credit for the Berkeley Board Fellows with it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I, I was yeah. wondering about the timing of that and was thinking that it would be great to do it in tandem um, or even before. But you know, 
It's, it's we, a little confusing. All right, full disclosure. My goodness, is your name Nora? Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think I've only met like two in my whole life. How exciting. I know. Um, I say the same thing. Yeah. I, oh. It never comes up. <laughs> right. Right. Um, we actually wanted board fellows to take the fall course. Okay. And with the MBA program, they were just reticent to give us the unit of credit for board fellows in the fall when the final project is due in the spring. They will do it, but they were... Mm -hmm. If we had had our druthers, we would have required in the fall. Okay, yeah. Problem of it doesn't start till October, drop ad was already passed. So sure. there are logistical problems, but I think it's all things considered. I think it's great that you're taking it in the fall. Okay, great. All right, I'm glad to hear that then. Yeah, yeah. And you will also have one of the cases I know that, that um, Lynn is working on, the instructor, who's also one of the coaches um, for board fellows, is a case um, working with PBS, public broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Um, dealing with racial justice issues. And oh, wow. Step up there. So you're in for a treat there as well. Oh, that's great. That's definitely super relevant right now. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for that um, great. preview. Okay. As I never get to say this, nice to meet you, Nora. <laughs> Same to you, Nora. I'll talk to you okay. soon. All right. Bye-bye. Hi, Nora. Hi, Mike. Uh, Thanks for your time again and for everyone else here. But uh, I noticed you repeatedly mentioned, not just in this brief, but also previous ones, uh, that the primary quality that you're looking for is commitment. And I'm curious here, I imagine that this is probably coming from possibly some negative experiences in the past with uh, past participants. So do you mind just talking in detail about that? Yeah. Um, so one of the problems we have had from time to time is that attendance at board meetings. Okay, they're off your schedule. They're not every week. They can be every month, every two months. You know, committee meetings are, they're not in your regular schedule. They're not baked into your regular schedule. So people will miss them. We have had, I have heard from boards that, okay, you had, you know, final exams or something and couldn't attend a board meeting. That's what we're trying to avoid. That this, this becomes a serious commitment um, as much as any other that you make at Haas. There are some inherent challenges because you'll start board fellows will match you with an organization that has a meeting times that work for your fall schedule, but none of us knows your spring schedule yet. Right, so there are there are some tricky logistical problems here, but it really is about the attendance at the board meetings. And the only other thing I would say is not letting the project go till the very end, but working on it throughout. And working well with a partner. Okay, thank you for specifying that. Sure. I can add something there because I like we had some experience of organizations that they also have one of the main board meetings in like maybe like 10 of January or 15 of January, and it's something that you don't know yet, neither. Uh, yeah, it's like probably you are in Thailand. I mean, like this year probably is going to be a bit different. Um, hopefully not, but maybe it's different. But in like, you can imagine last year, like we were all traveling and they say, can you be here in the 10th of January? It's like, I'm not applying to consulting, so I'm not supposed to be back in Berkeley at this time. Uh, so yeah, I think like uh, the organizations are normally like flexible, but also like lay out your expectations and communicate it to your coach. Like uh, so they can be different dates that they don't work. Thanks for your feedback, Adolfo. Yeah. Yeah, I will say that a few of the mentors from the boards that the board fellows will be working with this year are either alums or one is a teacher, actually, um, at Haas now. So they'll be more, a little more familiar with your schedules. Tell them that, but they'll just, they'll just know it more <laughs> Yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you for and your time, everyone. And I suspect this this year everybody's going to have to be flexible in some ways, but you know we're we're asking you to give it your best serious effort. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you again. Sure. sure. Anybody else? Questions? I'd like to apologize for the chiming sound in the beginning. I could not get it to turn off. 